And we are live. Greetings, greetings, family. Sister Shanice in the house alongside Dr. Winters. Welcome, welcome. Welcome on board, everybody. <laughs> Don't we just love our Dr. Winters? Yes, uh, he's our professor in the house. And, um, you know, family, if you haven't watched any of Dr. Winters' videos so far, you have absolutely got to go through the library find his videos and watch them. It is packed with scholarly information, with archeological information, you know, research information. It's all there, links to our, our existence as a people all over the world. It, it's, it's just so much. Well, anyway, as you come through the door, I wanna welcome you, family. I wanna rise you up. I wanna thank you in advance for staying with us throughout the evening, for the contributions that you're gonna be making in the chat. I'm thanking you in advance for the questions you're gonna be ra raising, for the comments, for your suggestions and your ideas. I thank you so, so much. So come on, spread the word. Let everybody know that we are live. Dr. Winters, how have you been since the last time we saw you? Well, I'm not doing well. It's uh, sunny over here, it's a nice sunny day. It's getting cool, but it's not it's not that real wint wintry yet. So I'm I'm very happy. I don't like oh. snow. I don't like digging out snow. You know, <laughs> that's so do you yeah. get both extremes of the weather uh where you are in oh, Chicago? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We get a very uh, we get a lot of snow. I have a snow blower, you know, so wow. So it, it can get up to maybe about it can get up to maybe about six, maybe 12 inches. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. And you got to get, to, yeah, sometimes you can't even go to work because there's so much snow. Really? Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, I'm just popping off some, some messages to let a few people know that we are indeed live. And to those who know we are live and have joined us already, rise up, rise up, rise up. We've got uh, Adrian in the house who says that he's been waiting for this one. We've got Brother Gebra in the house saying, uh, it's Wednesday evening. Yes, it is. And uh, where will I go? Remember, mm. rush on for the sister, Shanisha. Yeah, man. <laughs> rise up, rise up, Gebra. Uh, oh, our beautiful Gebek. Ge uh, Begat is in the house. Go travel broad. Oh, rise up, Mayor family queen, Baba. She's rising us up, uh, Baba Winters. And uh, Roots Reggae Girl, oh, I love that name. He's saying, greetings all. Yes, yes, go travel. It's Wisdom Wednesday. She gave me that name, Wisdom Wednesday. Uh, B1 Royalty, Black First All The Way. If you don't know what we mean about Black First All The Way, you will get to know, I'm sure, uh, by the end of today, this, today's show. Lily from North London, rise up yourself, Lily. Uh, <laughs> go travel saying anything but snow. I agree with that one, anything but snow. Gracias, adios, uh, from Nicaragua. Welcome, welcome. Families, you come through the door, let us know where in the world that you are viewing us from. Uh, Dr. Winters, you know, I log on to you on a Thursday evening on Reverend Shock Show. Uh, you have done, you have been running a marathon series on uh, Dr. Rev's show. What have you got coming up tomorrow evening? Let's give it a plug. Well, tomorrow, tomorrow I'm going to talk about uh, how melanated people make, make visible the invisible. I'm going to talk Ooh. about how, how I'm going to talk about how we're magicians, you know. And that, and that, if we just think about something, we can make it. We can make it happen, you know, because wow. of that creativity from being uh, first frequency. So I'm going to give some examples. I'm going to give some examples in terms of of how in the past uh, the past five thousand years, how how black people, African people, have been able, in a sense, to make the to make the invisible visible. We're like alchemists. We're like yeah. alchemists and that we're we're alchemists in a way because we can take we can take an idea and make it into reality, you know. Yeah. And uh, that's what I'm gonna talk about tomorrow is how is how we make the invisible visible. 
I it's like cool. that. Yes. You know, people may find it. People may find it interesting. You know, it's something that's uh, that I've uh, been thinking about. You know, because see, it's it's just that. Uh, you know, it's just very hard. I'm I'm getting very tired. Hmm. I'm getting very tired of people trying to put down uh, black women. They they're trying to they're trying over here. I don't know about over there, but over mm -hmm. here, over here, some people in the manis manosphere are trying to say that that uh that that the black woman isn't the prize, but the black woman is the prize. That's you know, right. She, she's the uh, she's the epitome. She's the epitome of 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 wellness she's the epitome of joy the epitome of happiness but mm -hmm. see we've been we've been uh so we've been so mixed up this generation you know is so mixed up you know a lot of people they don't understand that that because the fact is that a lot some women have made a mistake and and some women have uh picked the wrong men and they've uh it's a lot of baby mamas and see the thing is when i was growing up and, and even before me Black men would marry somebody who had maybe two or three babies, you know. But see, mm -hmm. now I know my, my like my grandson, he's 26. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's not, he said he's not marrying no no baby mama. And so then mm -hmm. that's very that's very dangerous because the fact that so many, so many black women in a sense have babies young. But see, we always mm -hmm. look at it as a we always look at a black woman as being foolish. It's not so much she's being foolish. It's just that she falls in love, you know. Mm -hmm. and I'm not. I'm not now. I'm not talking about those people who go with Nick Cannon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Nick Cannon is the baby machine, baby making machine. Okay. Oh no. And uh, he, <laughs> but the vast majority, the vast majority of of, uh, of of black women that I've met over the years, it, it, they fall in love, and, and somebody, in a sense, proves to be a liar. And so then mm -hmm. it's very difficult. And I think that because of the fact that, that many people want to take advantage of, see, it's so easy. Because of the fact that, that, that black women, see, black women from the tip of Antarctica and South America up to Canada, mm -hmm. we come from a slave culture. Because we come from a slave culture, we, we come from a culture in which, in which our women are always looking for love, but they don't feel love. They never mm -hmm. feel love. And most mm -hmm. of the time, because our women don't feel love, it's very hard for them to give 100% of themselves. They make it 75%, mm -hmm. maybe 90%, but rarely 100% rarely because their mothers and grandmothers have taught them, if, if I give a man 100%, he's going to leave me. So it's very, mm -hmm. difficult, very difficult. But, but to me, the black woman is still the prize. Okay, they talk, mm -hmm. about, they talk about European women. You know, I mean, the European woman, she's like most women. Mm -hmm. Let's face mm -hmm. it, what can you do? What have you done for me lately? If you don't have the money, it's very difficult. But but I think that that so many black men, black women, they want to they want to get a touch of whiteness. And they feel that they can get a touch of whiteness when they when they matriculate some sort of relationship with a white person, you know. And they feel that if mm -hmm. they're having if they're having sexual relations with a white person that makes them temporarily white but see yeah. that's not true it's not true mm -hmm. you're still you're still that you're still that black man you're still that black woman and then never just mm -hmm. like Kyrie Irving and the rest of them you know Kanye West Kanye West is a good example of someone who had uh, what I call mm -hmm. white itis you know <laughs> you know what we call itis when you see some good food and you eat the food up and you, and you eat so much food because it tastes so good, you get sick. You see, <laughs> white women, white women are like white eyed is because the fact is that you think you think you're becoming white because you're having sex with them. You may have children by them, but you don't become white. And that's what food um, uh, Kanye West. He thought he was a white man. No, you're still a brother. They they that's still right. see a black man, and they're not gonna let you in. They're not gonna let you. That's in. right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Oh, wow. And, you know, that's because we've been so miseducated as well as a people, isn't it? Into believing that, uh, well, into seeing ourselves as less than and seeing them as greater than. That's the, the whole essence of their uh, Eurocentric education and indoctrination. And a lot of our people have fallen 
uh, for that. But as you have so eloquently said, you know, they, uh, the, the epitome of uh, greatness are the ones who can bring out the greatness in our men as well are indeed us as African women. And I love what you're saying as well. Coincidentally, I do say that myself uh, as well about us being the people who can make the invisible visible, bring from the spiritual into the physical because we are the creators. We are, you know, uh, the living creators, created by the creator to create. And yeah. so, you know, we are creating on behalf of the creator, bringing from the mental, from the spiritual, from the invisible into the physical, into the visible. That's because we are the creators. <laughs> yeah, we are. And, and, and see, that's, what, that's what's wrong with uh, That's what's wrong with a lot of brothers. A lot of brothers, they don't want to go ahead and, and relax and, and really, really give, really give in a sense give their give their black woman them their total being you know a lot a lot of brothers in the sense they feel that if they if they submit i don't get mad but a lot of a lot of uh a lot of black men feel that if they submit to their woman then therefore in a sense it's they feel that they're they're allowing their woman to control them like mama controlled them no that's not it your woman <laughs> is your woman and your woman if, if your woman truly believes that you're a thousand percent behind her, she can make you be whatever you want. See, I, I I know this. I know this as a as a man, and I, I was married to my wife for fifty years. Uh, we we had been together for fifty two before she died. Wow. Oh. And, and, and I know I know that anything I wanted, anything I wanted on the planet Earth, if she wanted me to have it, I got it. Did you wow. hear what I said? Yes, yes. Yeah. Just, like just like yeah. you, sister, like you, Shanice. If you want your man to have something, he's going to get it. <laughs> yes, if you don't yeah. want him to have something, he's not going to get it. <laughs> you see, that's the whole problem that's with a lot, problem. Of, a lot of black men. They, they, they make so many women baby mamas, and they don't raise their children. And so mm. that means that they've got somebody, they've got that woman who could be their cheerleader, who could be their promoter. Instead, mm. she wants to see you hurt. She wants to see you down like mm. you. See, we have a, a most most black people deal with a lot of hurt, a lot of trauma. But we yeah. get trauma not just from, from, from the European. We get trauma in our relationships. Mm -hmm. We get trauma in our relationships because, you know, we don't really trust each other. Mm. And, and, and you need to learn how to trust each other. See, just having sex, just having, just having sexual relations with a person doesn't mean that you really trust that person. You know, mm -hmm. you might be having sexual relations and not really trusting that person, but because of the fact that they're there, okay, we should, uh, we should be together. Mm -hmm. see, when you make a, when you make a black woman feel secure, when you make a black woman feel that, that, that it, that she's protected. When you make a black woman feel that 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 anything she wants, she can get. Because you got to remember, a black man doesn't understand that many women may may make it appear as though money is the principle that controls them, but it's not money. What controls them is their heart. And if you can if you can make a black woman feel that that security, that feeling of safety. Oh, shit. Hey, Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. Oh, Dr. Winters, we've got Mahalik backstage. So I'm just going to bring her on. She's got an event coming up that she wants to tell us about. So let's bring her on for a couple of minutes so that she can share with us uh, the event that she's got coming up. Welcome, welcome, Mahalik. How are you doing? I was muted. Hello, hello, welcome. Um, thank you. Thank you for having me really in a short notice. Thank you. Uh, so I'm glad, glad to be here again. Uh, 
uh, it's always nice to be here. You're most welcome. Yeah. Briefly introduce yourself to the Sister Shanice audience. It's been a All while. Right. Yeah, okay. So uh, I am, I think I can say I'm a family to the, the Sister Shanice uh, show. This is not my first time. My name is Mahalit Ayele. I am from Ethiopia, but currently based in Europe. I have this media platform uh, called Connect Africa. Uh, I'm a Pan-African, I'm an Ethiopian, but at large, I'm a Pan-Africanist. And we do, we, we, we do uh, discussions which are really uh, Pan-African uh, discussions to look at things in the continent from, the per from African perspectives. Uh, and we organize webinar as well. Uh, yeah, so that's me in brief. Okay, and you've got an event coming up at the weekend. Uh, yeah, actually, it is tomorrow on 10th of November on Thursday. Oh. Yeah, oh. so uh, oh. I was listening to your discussion uh, with the elder and I was like, look at it, how the universe works. They're talking about African women and I, my topic is really related to that. So <laughs> the event, yeah, the, it's, it's amazing how things work. Eh? Um, mm -hmm. So it's called I am my sister's keeper. So uh, it's related to actually in uh, remembering and celebrating African women uh, who works uh, in the United Nations, African Union, and you know they are dismissed and uh, silenced because uh, for speaking up for Africans' right, for speaking the mm. truth, or uh, because they stood unbiased uh, on when it comes to Africa. Uh, just quickly, uh, this this idea was actually given birth to. Uh, you all know actually what Ethiopia has been going through for the past two years. So a year ago, there were two African women from the UN, uh, UNIOM and then UNFPA, who that was based in Addis Ababa. So they were unbiased on their view without taking any side uh, on the conflict uh, in the northern part of Ethiopia. Uh, and for that reason, uh, the UN has actually fired them. A year ago so uh, and then we have also this is not new uh, uh, the former uh, AU ambassador to the US uh, uh, Her Excellency Dr. Arikana Chiombori who also spoke up you know for what Western African countries are going through you know the continued uh, colonization or whatever you call it, neo-colonization uh, by France. And she, her job was terminated for that. And there are also others. These are because there the news is out there that we know. But I know for a fact that we have African women who are going through abuse and you know torture and everything and under investigation because they speak up. And I have a sister who works for you and actually that's how I organized this event. Uh, she was the same thing. She was very unbiased, very you know articulated and really telling the truth when it comes to Africa. And she works for one of the UN agencies. I don't have to say it. And for the past eight months, she's under investigation and she's not at her workplace be just because she spoke up. So uh, I wanted me mm. and uh, my colleagues, we wanted to remember those you know who are dismissed to say mm -hmm. you are not forgotten uh, and also we want to celebrate them uh, for their courage for their bravery to stand up you know uh, they, know the top, they know what is coming and but still uh, they did it so we have speakers tomorrow like um, uh, Her Excellency Dr. Arikana itself is one of the speaker. Uh, Dr. Mama Desta uh, Maghu, who she's also a, a speaker. Uh, and also we have uh, the Ethiopia, the Deputy Ambassador uh, of Ethiopia to Geneva. Uh, so those three are uh, our speakers. Uh, and I really, really thank you, uh, Sister Shanice, for giving me this opportunity to talk about it. Uh, as an African and also as an African woman, we need to 
uh, says that I am your keeper. You know, I am you. I am my sister's keeper. I am my brother's keeper. If we, if we don't talk about it, then who else will talk about it? They will just absolutely. Be so Mahale, if uh, the audience who are watching would like to join you and Her Excellency and the other wonderful guests that you have at your event tomorrow, how will they find you? Where where will they find you? What do they have to do? It's a Zoom link. It's not really, it, it's not complicated. Just uh, there's a passcode uh, ID and password and that's it. Uh, I mm -hmm. uh, sent you, but then I can forward you again. And uh, just uh, post it in the chat for okay. us, please. Yeah. Right. Uh, yes. Yeah. So post it in the public chat and then that's the link that they'll need to join the event tomorrow. And what time is it? It will be 7 p.m. Central European time. Uh, yeah, 7 p.m. So that is uh, 6 p.m. London time, um, 9 p.m. Eastern African time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Well, I'll certainly try and join you after Reverend, uh, now I think it's before Reverend Shock Show uh, tomorrow evening. So, yeah. We will be joining you there. So family, family in the chat, please do join Mahalet, Her Excellency, uh, Chim Arikana Chemboy, absolutely beautiful, beautiful sister, and all the other wonderful sister sisters who are going to be part of this event tomorrow. Mahalet, keep up the great work to your end, and I'll be in touch along the way. All righty. Thank you. Bye for now, Mahalia. Yeah, okay, bye. I, I am. Oh, actually, possibly... before you go, let me just start Dr. Winters if maybe he has a question or anything to ask you, Dr. Winters. Uh, no, I don't have any. I don't have any questions. You know, you know how you sisters are. Y'all gonna, y'all gonna tell the truth, and it don't matter. It don't matter what someone does to you; they can beat you, but until they kill you, you gotta tell the truth. I mean, that's the whole problem with with being a. Uh, with being an African, being an African, sometimes, sometimes we 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 can't help ourselves. We're touched by reality. We're touched by the truth that that we have to do it. You know that's why the Egyptians mm -hmm. call themselves black. A lot of people don't understand when when the Egyptians say that they were comedians, and 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 people say, you know, oh, they were black. No, they wasn't talking about black as a racial concept. They talked about black in, in terms of the fact is that the Egyptians recognized that God was black. Mm -hmm. they, rec they recognized in the sense that that Maat, the 42 principles, it was blackness. They recognized mm -hmm. in the sense that at night when you went into when you saw well, when you're in the dark, you was in the bosom of God. And so then because of the fact they called themselves comedians, well, they called themselves black because of their relationship with God. And see, as a result of our relationship with God, what that does is that it makes a sister, like the sisters, like the sisters in, in the Sudan. Those are some very heavy sisters, those are some strong sisters. And they spoke out about it. Some of them were beaten and killed, you know. Look, you know, I, I even had to look at that woman in, in uh that woman over there in Iran. I mean, hey, you know, women, you're not like us. I might become a fraidy cat. I might believe in a sense that I'm not going to stand up, but sisters like Malad, Shanice, you guys, if you believe in something, you're going to fight. You're ready to die. And that's crazy. Because, see, you produce the children. But at the same time you produce the children, you are, in a sense, that, that relationship to the mother goddess. And what does the mother goddess have to do? The mother goddess, she has to, in a sense, nurture us. And what you do is that you nurture us with truth. And that's why I hope the people in the uh, in the family be at that show tomorrow. Show up. Be supportive. You see, it's power. And these are yeah. these are our black women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These are our, so, the mothers of the race. Thank you so, what? so much, Dr. Winters. Yes, indeed, the mothers are going to be there tomorrow. So please do show up uh, one and all because wow, 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 there are some formidable women out there doing a great job, sticking their neck out, losing their jobs, 
you know, because as Dr. Winters was saying, we stand for truth and we want to ensure that, you know, uh, we make the world a better place. And that's what the women are out there doing. So I'm just going to post now uh, a link to tomorrow's event. And um, there it is. It's in the chat. Uh, the passcode is there as well. I might have to put it in two parts. So Mahale, yeah, please do continue to post in the chat. Thank you, not in the private chat, but in the comment section uh, in the show. And, um, you know, just keep reminding people throughout yeah. the show to attend your event tomorrow. So we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye Thank for you. now. Yes, bye. One love, one love. So, Dr. Winters, oh, you, uh, we were having a preliminary uh, discussion there and um, there were quite a few comments that was coming in. And so I just want to jump back uh, to those, uh, to some of the comments. Let's see what we've got. Oh, uh, now, respectful wisdom is saying, da -da -da. oh, but I do agree with Dr. Winters that a high amount of blacks do marry whites for a modern day social status. One should marry for love. Well, that is a program in itself, but uh, I've got another one uh, for you here that I, uh, I thought was quite controversial actually. Uh, let's see if I can find it again. Uh, this one, again from Respectful Woman, says that the races have been mixing since the beginning of time. It's only when skin color was assigned to modern day slavery. We are one human species with different hues. Now, you're opening a huge can of worm there, respectful wisdom. And, uh, you know, there are so many different perspectives on this. Do you even want to touch on this, uh, Dr. Winters? I, uh, or is it another topic for another day? You know that that's enough. That's a tough one. But the thing is, this is that we, you could do an entire show on that. But yeah. but of course, of course, the uh, the various races have uh, mixed. But it, it's just that uh, you know, at different times today, 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 Europeans they control the world. Since Europeans control the world, everybody feels that that's the greatest person to uh to marry. Back in Moorish days, between uh 711. AD all the way up to 1492 in Europe, people wanted to be married to a black man or a black woman because the Moors ruled everything. People always look at the people who are on top who have social status as a way in a sense of, of finding some sort of uh, relativity. But see, the most important thing is this is that you got to think about this is that, you know, we see sex as a drive, you know, uh, a woman got a woman got so many eggs, and she got to drop those eggs. She's gonna drop those eggs until her period stops. And so then, once a month, she's gonna be very horny. But the point is this, though, is that is that it's more than just having sex. When you have when you have sex, if you and your and your and your woman or your man, if you two can, in a sense, climax at the same time, you open up the chakras. And when you open up the chakras, remember there's five chakras. And when you open up the chakras, when they open, you exchange genetic material. And so then, since you're exchanging genetic material when you're doing intercourse, then what happens in a sense is that if you're with if you're with a member of your own race, the black race, if you if you're with a black woman, or if you're with a black man, that means in a sense that he she is sharing with you all of their memories, and all the memories are their ancestors and you're bringing all those things together and so when you bring those things together you create a fusion you create in a sense a state of power 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 listen i remember back in the 80s i was out of work and so then i had a, I, me and my wife used to talk a lot about our dreams and i said damn I had a dream about being a millionaire. I don't have any money. And she said, you got me and ain't that worth something? Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 What a response. Please, look. Beautiful. Look. Look. This is why you do it. 
You do this so that you create a union. And that's what the European has always been against. He's been against us trying to have a union. He doesn't want you to be with that black woman. He doesn't want you to be with that black man. They want you to be separate and against mm -hmm. each other because they know mm -hmm. that that's real power. The real power is like what, what the Oracle, and my Oracle is Sister Shanice. She says things and she doesn't know she's saying stuff that's powerful. But the point is this is that, is that when you bring us together, when you bring the black man together, the black woman together, you're creating a power that can't be stopped. Yeah. It can't be stopped, you see? Magic. Just like yeah. Mahalik, what she was saying about these black women, man, look, look, look. A sister, if she believes in stuff, she will die for it. Mm -hmm. And she will die for you. Mm -hmm. as a man. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee mm -hmm. you that that is nothing like a black woman on the planet Earth. No matter what people tell you, no matter how they denigrate us, no matter how they try to make our women look like they're, they're males or make them look like they're viral or, or have a lot of validity, hell no. Our women are soft. That's why they're so round and fluffy. <laughs> but anyway, as I said, <laughs> Thank you for flowering us women oh, for bigging us up, Dr. Winters, because we get, you know, so much flag, don't we, um, as African women. And so it's always beautiful, you know, when we hear one of our brothers, one of our men, you know, uh, speaking highly of us and respectfully of us. Thank you so much. It's, it's beautiful. But it's, so, but it's, uh, yeah. It's the truth, you know, like I told my sons, I told my sons, I said that, uh, I said, I'll love you always. I'll love you. Yeah. I can't help but love you. You know, your mother shared you with me. But I said, mm -hmm. I want to respect you. And I said, the only way I can respect you is if you take care of your wife and your children. And so far, my sons are doing what they're supposed to do. If not, I'm going to kick up. <laughs> 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 right, and they're done though. They're they done. better, they better do it. If they don't do it, I'm gonna <laughs> stop, stop turning me off. Shadi, stop turning me off. Stop. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Angel, Angel, uh, we want. We certainly hope you're enjoying the show so far. I am indeed. We welcome you from Texas. Uh, Go Travel saying, facts, uh, we've got to teach our daughters how to love themselves. Absolutely. Got you, and got you. Re yeah, reminding us as Cades, uh, the antidote is B1, black first, all the way black first. And uh, as Dr. Winters was saying to us last strong, or the last time he was with us, you know, if we agree you know, as a people that first and foremost, it's about putting black first. It's about race preservation. It's about, you know, uh, the importance, recognizing the importance of black man, black woman, and black children. Then, you know, that is, as Go Travel is saying, the antidote to Cades. Cades yeah, being culturally- um, Culturally acquired what? immune deficiency. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's worse than AIDS. You lose your identity. And when you lose your identity, there's no hope. You don't know who you are. You That's know, you're right. like a homeless, destitute person, right. aren't you? Totally right. lost. Uh, right, let's move on. Oh, Roots Reggae, welcome, welcome. The Jamaican drum crying at the house, welcome. Jamaican drum crying. So the Western world places the white man on top of the economic food chain, then the white woman, then the black woman, then the black man. But no Wait, man that, takes a, care of another man. That, that's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. Go ahead. That's why is it a lie? I'm gonna, tell you, I'm gonna tell you why it's a lie is that. Yeah. They only pretend, see that's, that's pretend. They pretend they raise the black woman up. No, they don't. What they do in a sense is that they just try to praise her so that she can fight her man, but they don't mm -hmm. raise her up to give nothing. When I was uh, teaching at Governor State University, I taught mm -hmm. there for 10 and a half years. And then I, I, when, I, when I started teaching at university, I felt a sense that, hey, you know, they're giving sisters so much. No, I found out 
that what they really do is that they don't want to give sisters that type of presence. Listen, white women are no fools. They're no chumps. They know if they give a sister half a chance, she'll be on top. Right, so what they try right. to do is that they try to play with black women and make them make them delusional. They make them feel in a sense that they're on top. No, it's a white man on top and a white woman, and that's it. That's mm. it. That's it. That's it. Look at all the black women who don't mm. hardly have any good jobs. Mm. Look at a lot of the black women working two jobs. Mm -hmm. Try mm -hmm. to make it. Mm -hmm. No, don't mm -hmm. ever believe that. And and the brother and sister who said that, you're right. That's what they pretend. But it's not the white man and the white woman and the black woman. No. No. It's just the white man and the white woman and their mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. Their children. Mm -hmm. Because the fact that the sisters said they don't want to I don't want to give you that type of uh, that type of prestige. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. True, true, true. Yes, I agree with you on that. Uh, they give the impression and the illusion as they're good at doing with their manipulative, deceptive ways, you know. But um, yeah, it's just a form of flattery. The reality is, it's about them keeping themselves on top. The, the Jamaican driver goes on to say that African has no friends outside of the race, and unfortunately, right. very few friends within. Well, it's the, you know, if we don't learn from our history, we never will. Welcome, Kim. Welcome in the house. Power Inc. Welcome in the house. Yeah, Kim is saying, Sister Shanice, please list the Zoom information for Marlette. Yes, it's been posted. I, I will repost as well. And uh, welcome, Patricia. Uh, she's welcoming you, Dr. Winters, and everyone on the platform. <laughs> but uh, the thing is, this is that that's uh, see, see, they 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 give us a delusion. They give us a delusion. See, Europeans give us a delusion. They always find some black person to say, if only black mm. people were unified, they could get somewhere. That's a damn lie. Are white mm. people unified? Mm. No. no. No, mm -hmm. there, is, there is there is no, there's nothing on earth that everybody agrees on. I like mm -hmm. beautiful black women. Mm -hmm. Other people like those other those other ladies. See, mm -hmm. should I be mad at them? No. But see, that's mm -hmm. the whole problem, brother, sister, whoever said that is that as long as you can be unified with someone else, and then they're unified with you and someone else then you can create a lot of unity, but you will never have total black unity. You will never have total white unity. You will never have total any unity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then when you accept that reality, then you can grow. How do you grow? Mm -hmm. You grow by being honest and being true with the people who you want to unify with. And if you're mm -hmm. honest and true, then you can mm -hmm. have great unity, but it can never be great. That's, that's, just, that's just another thing that the European tries to teach us to make us feel depressed. Mm. There's another thing that the European tries to teach us so that we will not want to help each other. Remember, as I said before, I don't know about, about black people in Africa, but I know that anybody from the tip of South America near Antarctica, all the way into Connecticut, into uh, Canada, we come from a slave culture. We've been conditioned to hate each other. We've been conditioned to pull each other down. But you overcome that by, first of all, understanding, love your woman, love your man. If you love your woman, then you're going to love your children. If you love your children, they're going to grow up healthy. And they're going to grow up with a self-esteem. The vast majority of Black people have what's called empty self-esteem. What that means, in a sense, is that they may be a great cook. They may be a great athlete. They may be a great student. And they have self-esteem for being a great cook, an athlete, or a student. But they don't have self-esteem in being Black. And because mm -hmm. they lack that self-esteem in being Black, then therefore they can never feel whole. Mm -hmm. It's an emptiness. It's mm -hmm. an emptiness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the only way you can close that emptiness, I'm sorry, you might get mad at me out there, but I'm sorry. But the only way that you can close that in, that that emptiness is to love upon you a black woman like you. 
the love of on a black man like you, because if you love each other and truly, truly, sincerely, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and nothing else matters, keep mm -hmm. your promises, mm -hmm. then you'll find that the whole world is your oyster. The wow. most of us, in a sense, we're looking to try to, in a sense, unify around other things. No, you unify on the basic principle of what? Life. The basic principle of oneness, the basic mm -hmm. principle of being be one, be one, you know, black first. And if mm -hmm. you look at that, then you can move forward. But anyway, I, I, I get, no, I it's get beautiful it. advice. No, we have to listen and we have to take the advice because Dr. Winters, you shared with us, you were happily married for 52 years. And, you know, if we can learn from you, we need to learn from you. So thank you for sharing what it's all about. Black man, black woman, and the family loving each other. But, but it, wasn't, mm -hmm. it, it wasn't easy because I, I'm still a man. And as a man, see, see, men are confused. They're confused, Shanice. And you know why we're confused? Mm -hmm. Because our woman tells us that they want us to do X, Y, Z. But your woman doesn't want you to do everything she tells you. Because <laughs> if you do everything she tells you, she thinks you're a simp. So you got to sometimes sleep on the couch. <laughs> oh, like sleeping on the couch. But you got to do it. Because see, <laughs> see, this is it. I'm going to tell you guys out there. Don't be contrarian all the time. But try to, in a sense, understand. Understand your woman and understand that a black woman only asks one thing of you, two things of you. Number one, don't lie too much. And number two, don't don't cheat on her. I mean, she'll give you yeah. anything, but if you cheat on her, oh, it's messed up. Hey. <laughs> it's messed up. They might take you back. They might take you back, but it won't be the same. Mm -hmm. so you have to be cool but anyway I, i'm supposed to be talking about what are you doing great advice great yeah. advice yeah it's show time it's show time presentation time another fantastic presentation coming up by dr winters do you, would you like to tell us the topic title of okay, your the presentation our, today the topic is our fbb 1900 to the present and what i'm going to do is i'm going to continue this process let me up let me go to present and share the screen. Yes. And I think I might need to do something here as well. Let me uh, check the bottom of the screen. Okay, so I'm looking out for when the presentation comes up. Because I think it came up. Yep, here it is. Okay. Oh, no, I'm looking at us. This is it. I think this is it. Okay, add to can you see it? Yes, I can see it. Uh, FBB from 19. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. So, um, family, family, let me um, just formally introduce our wonderful Dr. Winters uh, to you today. Let me uh, quickly run through to his bio because, wow, 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 you need to know. Uh, the great man that we have before us today, how well researched he is, how well knowledgeable he is. You know, you need to know the person that's going to be delivering the presentation to us today. So we are honored, we are absolutely honored, family, to have in the house uh, Dr. Winters. He's an international giant uh, in the field of African history. He's an author author of over 30 books. He's a writer, linguist, anthropologist. Wow, wow, wow. We are so grateful to be able to uh, drink from the fountain of knowledge today, you know, of this great, great man. So Dr. Clyde, he's an educator, educational psychologist, anthropologist, linguist, and he's taught all grades levels uh, in the education sector from elementary school right up to university. And, uh, you know, he's all about learning and sharing that learning as well. He's particularly interested in our Asian history, uh, population genetics as well, and has been instrumental in using population genetic, linguistic, and anthropology in proving 
the indigenous orange origins of Afro-Americans and the African origin of the Paleo-Americans in North and South America. All of this is, you know, pioneering work. And that's what makes our Dr. Winters head and shoulders above the rest. Uh, we have what they say in the field, uh, researchers, and we have regurgitators. The researchers are the ones who do, you know, the hard work of digging out the information finding the information, interpreting the information, analyzing the information, and then presenting it. And then the regurgitators, the ones who just regurgitate what others have already done. Uh, great if they do that, because we need to share the information, but even better when they give credit where credit is due uh, and recognize those who have done the research. But Dr. Clyde is one of those who's out there doing the research. So we're honored to be uh, hearing today uh, from you, uh, Doctor, of the research that you have done uh, to be able to present to us foundational Black Britons from 1900. Thank you. Over to you, Dr. Winters. Yes, uh, you know, you humble me. You humble me, sister. You, hum you humble me, uh, Shanice, because the point is this, is that people don't know the type of uh, researcher you are and uh, what you're going to do for uh, FVB. Uh, you can go the uh, you can go to my Patreon. Please join my Patreon. In my Patreon, you're going to find the slides of today's uh, presentation and all of, and all the presentations that I make. I send all my slides to Patreon because my Patreon that's where I have uh, people who are supporting me. They try to they they're give they're they're supporting my research. They're giving me ideas and they help me in a sense to to stay grounded. And, and, and understand that the most important thing is to be B1. So please join my Patreon. Uh, I'm on Twitter, at Dr. Clyde Winters 8. Sometimes I get on, not too often. Uh, then you can go to uh, my YouTube channel. If you go to uh, YouTube, go to Clyde Winters, you can find I have over 200, over 200 videos that deal with all aspects of, uh, of Black history. And then uh, you can order my books at uh, Amazon.com. B1 is acknowledging your Black African ancestry and mod, not heritage. We must be race men and women proud of our culture and African Black ancestry. What is B1? B1 is unity with mod. Dr. Marie Charles has noted that Kim Dejet, mod. Kim Dejet in mod. To be Black, speak you mod. Uh, some of the books that deal with, uh, with ancient uh, history in Europe or FBB. FBB means F foundational, B black, B Britain. So FBB is foundational black Britons. And uh, these are some of the books that I've written on the uh, on the history of black people in Europe. That includes my blacks in Europe. Then if you get the world history of the black race, the world history of the black race will tell you all the continents where black people once, or once ruled. And uh, they'll talk about their civilizations. The manufactured genetic origins, the fake Eurasian back migration in this book, I talk about how you've been taught a lie that Europeans did not really originate in Europe. Europe was a black continent. And this is the beauty of understanding history and knowing the truth. You know, uh, we have a new history. And this new history was began by Dr. Marie Charles. And it's Dr. Marie Charles who, who coined the name Foundation of Black Britons. You know, uh, Dr. Marie Charles, after I read her research, after I looked into it, I found out that, that I had been teaching a, a lie. I had been teaching a lie. Yes, I taught Afro-American history. I taught African history for 46 years. And during this period, I did not even know about the, uh, the FBB, Foundation of Black Britons. I did not know about the Baradinax. I did not know that, that, that Welch, the Britain, Ireland, Scotland, that these were formerly black nations, that it was black people who lived there. I, I didn't even know, I didn't even know, I didn't even know that when I was teaching black history and I was talking about chattel slaves, I didn't even know that the first, the first chattel slaves in the history of the world was not Africans. 
The first chattel slaves in the history of the world were black Catholics from Ireland, black Catholics from Scotland. But I didn't know this until I read the beautiful, the wonderful, the exciting research of Dr. Marie Childs. Because see, Dr. Childs' research shows the connection between ancient Britannia and Africa. Dr. Marie Childs initially taught as a primary classroom teacher before moving into pedagogical research and teacher education. With a career spanning over 30 years, she has taught across the range from young children to adults. Yes, Marie Childs, she's an FVB. She's over there in Britain doing the research. Marie Childs has a doctorate in cultural studies and humanities with a special focus on curriculum, writing, and reconceptualize the curriculum. And this curriculum that she developed is a curriculum that's meant to fill that empty spot in all of us, that, that empty place, that, in, that empty place that, that, that as, a, as a Black person you always feel, who am I? What was my language? What was my language before the European came? Why did he make me speak this language? What was my language? And Dr. Charles answers that question. She tells us. She tells us that the language of that VB was Irish, Old English, Welsh, and that these languages have an African foundation. What does that mean? That means in a sense that, that, that when you're FBB, you have a great history. You have a history that goes back, back, back. They already tell you that, 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 that the man, that the earliest one that they found is 22,000 years old. But they, they make you feel that, oh, he was just a, a, a blip in the history of the British Isles. No, you were there. You're FBB, Foundational Black Britons. Yes, Dr. Charles has published extensively in international peer-reviewed journals. Yes, peer-reviewed journals. And is a co-author of a trilogy of research-based books on formative teaching based on multi-modalities and multi-literacies. What is multi-modalities, multi-literacies? What this means in the sense is that she, she teaches from a perspective in which you can he hear, see, smell the knowledge. And you can and you can see that this knowledge is so real that it's ingrained in you, you know. Dr. Charles is also the director of the Many Faces in Teaching. It's called MFIT. And this organization, which gathers and publishes research-based programs to empower learner facilitators. Dr. Charles' goal is reframing and decolonizing the Eurocentric curriculum taught in UK schools. Yes, yes, yes. Dr. Charles has developed a teaching program around the genesis of geometry, which is linked to our African flesh, bruh, the hidden sun, the ka, soul, the flesh and soul of the hidden sun. That's why she says that in addition to you being FBB, you're the Barada Knox. Barada Nax, that's the soul of the light. God, bra, the sun, the sun. You're the light of the world. Yes, yes, yes. BFF, you're the light of the world. But nobody knew about this. Nobody knew about, about our black brothers and sisters who lived in England, who lived in uh, Scotland, who lived in Ireland. We didn't know about them. The only thing they taught us was that everybody was a slave. They told us that the only black people in Britain were slaves that came over there after the Atlantic slave trade. They also told you that maybe you, it was some black people who were in a sense some African elites that came over, they never taught us. That the Irish, many were black, just like you. Dr. Charles has developed a teaching method around our African origins and the subsequent migrations out of Africa of the first people with a focus on the material culture that our ancestors conceived, developed, and sustained over many millennia. Yes, yes, yes. Stop it. Stop it. Stop looking in the mirror and feeling that you're something less. You're more. You're more. You're more than what you see. You're more than what they teach you. You're more than what they tell you. That's your land. 
if it exists to hear the agency of those who are reacting and responding in such a way that we want them to know that these structures are always contingent, tentative, provincial, and therefore subject to transformation, yes, this history, this new history, this history that Dr. Charles has brought to us allows us in a sense to be more transformative because it allows us to transform into who we really are, to know who you are. That's scary, that's scary. You just don't know how scary that is. I was teaching history for 46 years. I was teaching in a sense that, that the first slaves, the first chattel slaves in the world were, 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 were those Africans brought over here. The first Africans landed in America in 1619 and they were indentured servants. They just started making making those indentured servants chattel slaves until the till the uh, 1670s and the 1680s. But, 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 stop stuttering. I learned, I learned from Professor Charles that the first chattel slaves came from Ireland. They were black Catholics and that dirty, 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 dirty. Oliver Contra Cromwell, he ordained that they would not be chattel slaves. They would not be in a sense, I'm sorry, they would not be indentured. They would be chattel slaves forever, forever. Because they didn't want you to come back, but you're back now. <laughs> so, Dr. Charles makes, make, lets us know that the foundation of Black Britons, their ancestors were the Kushites, the Celts, the Picts, the Niagara, the Niger, the Niger, the Doob of Scotland, the Moors, yes. These are your ancestors, but oh, wow. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Sister Janice, she's the FBB Oracle. Yes, she's the Oracle. She's a clarion caller. She's calling all of us back to who and what we were. She comes here every Wednesday to let you know who you are, where you came from. Because when you know where you came from, you know what you can become. So Sister Janice has provided the the FBB, a history curriculum, yes. In the past year, Sister Shanice has developed a curriculum, a history curriculum, you see. This curriculum provides a true and accurate history of the Baradanaks, or ancestral Black Britons, who were exiled to the American 13 colonies in curriculum. This, this curriculum began when, Sister, when uh, Marie Charles did a beautiful presentation on the Sister Shanice show. And when she did it, she talked about, you know, Professor Charles talked about our true African history as original settlers of the British Isles. You got to go back. Stop it. Stop it. Sister Janice is giving you so much. She's giving you a curriculum that your children should see. That your children should know. Because when your children know this, then they, in a sense, can be able to find and see where they fit in in the British Isles. You're not a stranger. You're not in a way, you're not away. You're not on an island by yourself. That was your place. But I've also, what I've tried to do over the past couple of up, uh, this past years, I've been trying in a sense to give that curriculum to you. And Sister Shanice has facilitated me giving that curriculum. I first began with a show, Europe was a black continent. Check it out, check it out. It gives you the archaeological and historical evidence that it indicates that ancient Europe was a black and that these blacks taught the white civilization. Check it out. I also mm -hmm. did a think our origin of the foundation of black British part two. I discussed this. Stop it. Stop it. Stop letting your children go to school, letting your children feel, feel abused, letting your children feel that they're nothing when they're more. It's simple math. One plus one is two. They try to teach you that that the history of, of the foundational Black Britons is zero. That's a lie. Go and check out these videos. Sister Janice has given you the history curriculum. Take it. Show it. Let your children know who they are. Then I did one on the history of the Black Celts and the Vikings of Britain. I showed you how these original Vikings and Celts were Black Africans. 
like you, like me, like us. Stop, 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 stop. Stop thinking that you're minus. Stop thinking that you're zero when you're plus. FBB, Foundation of Black Britons all the way. And then uh, the other week we did one on, a couple of weeks ago I did one on the hidden history of, uh, of England. And we talked about in a sense where black people came from, how black people in a sense were, were here, you see? I talked about in a sense how they, how they did everything to run you out of, in a sense, Britain. They sent us, they sent your ancestors to the Caribbean. They sent your ancestors to the 13 colonies. But now, in a sense, luckily, Jamaicans are coming back. They're going back home. Britain is your home. Mm-hmm. Haven't you ever wondered, all of you Jamaicans out there, all, all of you Jamaicans, I'm just, I'm going to just talk to the Jamaicans now. You see, in Britain, they like the people from Trinidad. They like the people from Guyana. They're a little bit like the people from Bermuda and the Bahamas, but they don't like Jamaicans. They don't like Jamaicans, man. Why do you think they don't like Jamaicans? They don't like Jamaicans because they know that that your ancestors used to run that damn country. They know they took your home. They took Mm -hmm. your home. They took your property. They took your names. Mm -hmm. Yes, they took your names. And so when they Mm -hmm. see a Jamaican, they're afraid of you. They're afraid that one day you're going to know. And that's what Mm -hmm. Sister Janice has done. She's brought it here. She's brought it to our channel. She wants to let you know that you, Mm -hmm. you, you, that's your land. Oliver Cromwell, that did it, did it, did it, man. Look at uh, look on the right hand side. They always want to show you a picture of 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 of, of Oliver Cromwell looking uh, whitish, but he was really yellowish, you know, like the average light skinned brother. That's what he was. He was black, but he was a terror, and he was a terror because he believed in Protestantism. He believed in Protestantism. He believed in the sense that if you were a Catholic, you should be ground under his feet. He believed if you were a Catholic, you should be destroyed. Oliver Cromwell reconquered Ireland in 1649. He hated black, he hated Catholics, and these were mainly black. He massacred 3,500 in the first battle. Yes, yes. The rest were sold as slaves to the 13 colonies in the Caribbean. These Irish slaves were sold in high numbers between 1649 and 1653. Look on that right hand side in the bottom. This, this is a wood carving from that period. Look at those women. Somebody last week when, when me and Sister Janice was just having a little conversation and we were bringing people on to talk about like, somebody said that they didn't believe that Oliver Cromwell killed the babies. Look, look, this is from the period. Mm-hmm. We don't have to lie. Look at that baby on the spear. Mm-hmm. Look how they look and look at how they darken the faces of those sisters. I didn't do that. They did it. They did it because they came there in a sense and they were going to pitch for what do I say? Mercy through their pitchforks into their children bellies. They're in them into the water. Yes. Yes. Why what why, 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 why did those people think I was lying? I wasn't lying. They hated those black Catholic Irishmen. And they sent over 100,000 Irish children were sold as slaves in Virginia and New England. And they sent 300,000 child slaves to the Caribbean. Yes, yes, yes. Sister Janice has written on this. And one day when she does her book on the history of the Baradanax, you're gonna see all the great knowledge that Sister Shanice, Shanice, the Oracle, is going to give you. But until she writes her book, look at these videos. Look at these videos. Know your history. Teach your children. These slides are from the British Black History Timeline, Syracuse University, London. Ignatius Sancho, the first African prose writer published in England. Sancho became a financially independent male 
householder and the first known black voter. Yes, he had money so he could vote. You see? The black lunges account for 10,000 to 15,000 of the nation's 20,000 black people in the 1760s, but these were slaves. These were descendants of slaves. They don't never want to talk about the black Irish and Scotsmen who were sold into chattel slavery by Oliver Cromwell. They want you. They want you to only believe that the only black people that was ever in the British Isles, the only black people in Ireland, the only black people in Scotland were only people in a sense that were slaves. No, that's not your history. Stop, stop, stop. Stop believing those lies. Sister Janice has been kind enough to allow me to come on here and talk to you about your history. Dr. Marie Charles, she's been writing about your history. Know who you are, what you are. Stop letting these people tell you that you're nothing. You are plus. You are everything. Be one. Be one. Be one. FBB, Foundational Black Britons. In 1805 to 1881, we had Mary C. Cole. She's a nurse who independently set up the British Hotel to care for wounded during the Crimean War. She became a oh. much bigger. Yeah. Okay, apologies. My internet seems to be dropping. Please continue if you can. I'm going to uh, I'm going to try to continue. They they want to stop this message. They do it. To, they they've done it to Dr. Uh, Reverend Matthews before too. Blacks in Britain have a long history of fighting for justice and equality. Pan Africanist ideals emerged in the late 19th century in Britain in response to European colonization and the exploitation of the African continent. The Pan-Africanists believed that slavery and colonialism depended on encouraging negative, unfounded characterizations of the race, culture, and values of African people. One of the first organizations created to encourage Pan-African unity in the British Isles was the African Association, founded by Henry Sylvester Williams, a Trinidadian barrister in London in 1897. These Blacks saw Pan-Africanism as a way to fight caves. The letters K's mean culturally acquired immune identity deficiency syndrome. K's has caused much destruction in the African American and the uh, the B the uh, FBB Foundational Black British Community. K's is a psychological equivalent to the AIDS virus. This is an, inf an infectious mental illness that causes the individual to lose his or her immunity to white mental domination of their mind and loss of identity as noted by Joanne Caramante, a member of my Patreon. And uh, this, uh, you know, Joanne, she's the one who made me really think about the fact that that in Cage, you're not only in the sense, you know, you 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 become you you lack immunity to white to white supremacy, but also it, it, it affects your identity. And I really thank her. She's a member of my Patreon. And that's why I love my Patreon members. And I love in a sense the fact that they support me and they helped me think even more detailed about many subjects. As a proud black man or woman due to acceptance of white supremacist tenets, that black historical and cultural values must be rejected in favor of feelings of inferiority, empty self-esteem, and subservient to Caucasian cultural historical values. They manifest to harm African black people generally. Yes, caves, 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 caves. You had to fight caves. Case is a culturally acquired immune identity deficiency gen syndrome. You got to fight it. To fight case, you must stay black first. Be one through acceptance of your African ancestry and true knowledge of your history. Case has caused much destruction in the uh, black community. It is the psychological equivalent to the AIDS virus. The aim of knowing your history is to strengthen your cultural awareness of black and African people so they can have the self confidence to fight case. Afrocentrism is the ideational code African people can use to conceptualize the universe in which they live and interact. Culture can be defined as man's learned accumulated social experience, including man's art, belief, customs, knowledge, law, and morals that are transmitted and shared by a social group. In general, culture refers to a system of learned ideas, not what we do or make. Yes, yes, yes. You see? Culture is important. That's why they want to make you feel, in a sense, in Britain, 
that you're not supposed to be there. They want to make you feel that you're a stranger. They want to make you feel that you're an interloper. They want to make you feel that you're a thief trying to steal their country. You're not a thief. They're the thief. That's your land. That's your land that they took from your ancestors before they sent them to, to Innocence, Jamaica. Before they sent them to the 13 colonies, they took your land and they took your name. Look at their heraldic. Look at their look at the uh, look at their the, the, look at their their family crest. That family crest is always of a black person. You. They stole your name. They stole your history. It's time to take it back. As a result of caves, if you are an African professional social scientist, good good African Christian, good African actor, or middle class Negro, you will avoid learning your history and respecting researchers who teach you your history because you believe whites, even if you have no whites in your life, will respect you if you follow the traditional middle class Negro position that white is right. If you're mellow, you're yellow. If you're black, step back. As a result, if a middle-class Negro earns a terminal degree, she, he will not further self-esteem of African people because these researchers will avoid teaching the trueness. They leave in a facade. They live a facade. They live a facade. They give you the outward appearance of being black. <laughs> but deep down in a sense, they don't believe in being black. They don't love themselves. They don't love their fellow man. They don't love their woman. Don't you see? Don't you see? Don't you see? The European needs to keep you from your woman because it's your woman that makes you strong, black man. It's your woman that gives you that power to go out there and face the world. It's your woman, in a sense, who will bag you up. It's your woman that's your tree. The black woman is a tree. She's not just a goddess. She's not so far away that you can't touch her. She's your tree, black man. She's your tree. That she, 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 She's that immovable object that you can lean on. She, 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 she's that teddy bear that you can hug at night and hold so tight. Soft and lovely. Black man, black man, black man. You better grab your woman. What causes the cage virus? The cage virus is caused primarily when a black person places the pursuit of European culture and values over the traditional culture and values of FBB and African people. This lack of race pride Naja one past leads to feelings of racial inferiority due to caves. Many African people are ignorant of their past and thus they lack the human values necessary to protect the FBB culture from self-destruction. What is worse, these blacks can know they are perpetuating a lie. Yes, they know they're lying, but do it anyway because they feel other blacks are too ignorant to see through their deception. Love thyself, love your people. FBB, FBB, FBB. Foundational Black Britons have a tradition of Pan-Africanism. They held the Pan-African Congresses in London. In 1900, the Trinidadian barrister Henry Sylvester Williams organized the first Pan-African con Conference, which was held at Westminster Hall in London. In 1937, the International African Service Bureau was founded, including African and Caribbean radicals such as Amy Ashwood Garvey, C.L.R. James, Jomo Kenyatta, yes, Jomo Kenyatta, under the leadership of the Trinidadian Marcus, George Padmore, do you know? Do you know? Do you know that your ancestors, the elders that was in London, they were fighting for justice. They wanted their rights. It's nothing new. It's nothing new. They want you to believe that, that it wasn't until the wind rush that your people was trying to fight. But yes, they were trying to fight. They didn't know their history. They they didn't know that they were they were FBB, but they understood that it was only through Pan Africanism, B Oneism, B Oneism, Black first. No matter where you come from, you can be FBB. You can be Ghanaian. You can be Trinidadian. You can be Guyanese. 
but be one, be one first. John Autry, a British politician and political activist, was elected mayor of Battersea, becoming the first black mayor in London. Yes, yes, you didn't know that, did you? In 1913, between 1914 and 1918, World War One, black soldiers could be found in all branches of the British armed forces. Walter Till was the most celebrated black British soldier of the First World War. Yes. 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 I'll tell you, I'm glad I wasn't fighting doing uh, World War I charging to, from trench to trench, going over there a uh, barbed wire, getting shot at. Uh, you could just call me a coward. I'm a coward. <laughs> yes, I'm a coward. I didn't want to run in the face of those machine guns, those bullets. But Walter Till, a foundation of Black Britain like you, he's ready to go fight. He fought. He was brave. I don't want to run up against machine guns. I'm from America. We want to hide behind a tree. Give me my gun in the tree. <laughs> I don't want to charge a machine gun. In 1990, there was a series of violent riots in Glasgow. South Shields, Salford, London, Hull, Newport, Barrie, Liverpool, and Cardiff. These are riots, so, so street fights, vandalized properties, and five people killed. Yes. Yes, it was fatal riots. I know you all, I know all of you, I know just about every one of you know about the 1919 riots over in America. Yes. But nobody wanted to tell you it was riots in 1919 over there in Britain. They didn't want to tell you that because they just like just like the white supremacists in America. They wanted to keep us down. They knew that those brothers and went over there and they had fought against white people. They showed that a white person was just a human being, just like them. They had learned in fighting in Britain and fighting over there in France. They had learned in the sense that that we're human beings, but they wanted to make sure in 1919, when the London, when the black people came back. To Britain. They want to remind you that you're nothing. They want to remind you that don't you dare get up and eat and think you can be somebody. But it didn't matter. Those black people who fought in World War I, when they came back, these were men, men, men. They knew they could fight and they were back to fight for justice. Justice for you. Yes, stop. Stop, stop, stop thinking that your whole history in Britain is that of a slave. Stop it. Understand that these black people who fought in, from Britain, who fought over there in France, they came back, but they knew in a sense that they were somebody and that they had to fight for their justice. Nobody wanted to give them anything. You better remember this. You better remember this. FBB, you got no friends. You got no friends. The only friend you got is maybe another black person. But you better be damn sure that you make sure that your best friend is your woman or your man. Stop, stop, stop. Fighting each other, love each other. Racism after the war. At the end of the First World War, many African and West Indian soldiers who had fought for their mother country, <coughs> yeah, decided to make Britain their home. But in some cities, including the seaports of, of Cardiff and Liverpool, they came under attack. After the demobilization, many ex-servicemen faced unemployment and returning white soldiers resented the presence of black men, especially those who had found employment and married white women. Between January and August 1919, there were anti-Black race riots in seven towns and cities in Britain. Carter's Black population had increased during the war from 700 in 1914 to 3,000 for April 19. 3,000. 3,000. 100,000 white people, but they didn't want to even let 3,000 Black people. No, they didn't want those 3,000 Black people in Cardiff. You know why? You know why? You know why? because they know that you're a unique people. They know that you're a people who work hard. You'll work hard as hell to get anything done. You work hard as hell to prove in a sense 
that you should be respected and treated with respect. And they didn't even want 3,000. The tensions between the white and black communities exploded into violence in, in, in Butte Town, AKA Tiger Bay in June, 1919. 2,000 white people attacked shops and houses associated with black citizens. Many were injured. Yes, 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 yes. You better listen to me. Just like in America, every time you build up a community, every time you build your own businesses, your stores, a community that has wealth, the European comes to tear it down. He comes to destroy it because he wants you to have nothing. But your FBB, your foundational Black Britons, people can't keep you down. Look at what you've accomplished with all the hate, all the animosity, all the fear they have of you. And yet look at what you've done. You are mighty, mighty, mighty great people. The 1919 riots were one of the most severe incidents of unrest in 20th century Britain, known as race riots. They came to national prominence near the newspapers of the day, making many aware of the presence of the and minority ethnic communities of Britain. In April and July 1981, there were riots in several cities and towns in England. Yes, you had riots in 1981, too. The riots mainly involved black British youth clashing with police. You see? You don't just sit around over there. You don't just sit around and, and, and let Caucasians keep you down. You don't just sit around over there just going and, and wrapping your hands. I can't do nothing. I can't fight. Your FBB. Your FBB. You will fight for what's right. You will fight because you know it's right. Even if you feel you might lose. Even if you feel they might kill you. Your FBB, FBB, FBB. Foundation of Black Britons. It was the Communist Party that took a lead in challenging the racism of much of the trade union leadership from its founding in the 1920s. The Communist Party was key to setting up the National Minority Movement in 1924. This organized the left-wing minority that opposed the conservatism of the union leadership. The Communist Party was one of the first organizations within the British labor movement to have an explicit, I repeat, have an explicit anti-racist agenda, opposing the color bar in the British Empire Commonwealth, then opposing it in the, the domestic sphere as the number of Commonwealth migrants rose in the 1940s and 1950s. I'm not, I'm not saying support uh, communism. I don't believe in communism. I don't, I don't I believe in communism. But I'm just telling you that this was an organization that helped the FBB fight for their rights know their rights and keep on struggling. In 1939 and 1945, we had World War II. Around 10,000 Caribbean men and women joined the British Armed Forces, working behind the scenes and on the front lines to defeat the Nazis. Yes, yes, yes. They act like Britain, act like they won the war by themselves. Get out of here. Britain, they, good, they make good naval personnel, but they're not good soldiers. Get out of here. They needed their, their Caribbean and African soldiers to fight for them. They don't know how to fight. But they're good in the Navy, kicking each other's ass. Arf. During World War II, Britain recruited some 600,000 African men to fight against the Axis power. From the Italians in the Horn of Africa to BG France, forces in Madagascar, to Imperial Japanese Army in Burma, now known as Myanmar. Yes, yes, yes. 600,000. Black men, African men, they fought against Germany. A documentary for Al Jazeera English has found found with black troops receiving a third of the pay. Yeah, they always want to always want to do something stupid. You had all these black people fighting in World War II, but they wouldn't even pay us pay us the money that we deserve. They only wanted to pay us a third of the pay of their white contemporaries of the same rank. Some Africans were forcibly or secretly conscripted while others were beaten by their superiors. Many ended up in poverty. Yes, after the war, they ended up in poverty. 
ended up in poverty. Even though they had fought for their, even though they had fought for Britain. That's what you got, but it didn't matter. You still was a man. You still was a woman. And you knew what you deserved at BB all the way. The RAF had many, had made the journey to Britain. And black servicemen also went on to help bolster the numbers in the army and Royal Navy. By the end of the war, the RAF, there were over 17,000, 17,500 male and female volunteers from the West Indies alone. Yes. The Trinidadian Ulrich Cross is often recognized as the most decorated Caribbean airman of World War II. He joined the RAF at age 24 in 1941, trained as a navigator and joined the 139th Squadron, gained the nickname the Black Hornet. The Black Hornet. What does a hornet do? It's sting you. Bye, bye, bye. Woo. Whoa. Whoa. He became an expert in precision bombing and joined the ranks of the elite Pathfinders force. Often flying missions at just 50 feet instead of the normal 25,000 feet. At the 50 missions, Cross was given the option to rest. He refused and volunteered for a further 30 missions. By the end of the war, Cross had flown 80 missions over Germany and occupied Europe and was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross in 1944 and the Distinguished Service Order in 1949. You can't keep a brother down! You cannot keep a brother down or a sister down. The only way you keep a brother or sister down is by finding a way to make sure we can't compete. Because if they allow us to compete, if they allow you to compete, you're going to overcome. You're going to be the best. They tell you every day, your children are dumb. They want to put your children in special education. They want to tell you your children can't accomplish things. That's a lie. That's a lie. You're FBB. You're FBB. It was your ancestors that founded the architecture in Britain. It was your ancestors that built the parliament and built all those other great buildings. It wasn't white people. That was black people who built those. How dare you tell me that my child can't do anything? Yes. Yes. Your child can do much more but your child has to know their history. That's why Susan and Denise has been trying to teach you your history, let you know who you are, let you know where you came from, and letting you know where you can go. Lillian Batter, 1918 to 2015, was one of the 100 female volunteers from the Caribbean to join the British Armed Forces. She was born in Liverpool to a British mother and Bar Barbadian father, but was orphaned at the young age and raised in convents. She was dismissed from the Navy, Army, and Air Force Institutes, and after her father's heritage was discovered, but eventually became one of the first black women in the RAF after joining the Women's Auxiliary Air Force in 1941. She was trained in instrument repair, working on air, air speed, Oxford light bombers, and was promoted up to the rank of corporal. Yes, 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 yes. They try to hold you back, but you're a BPP. You're FBB, you're foundational black Britons. Nobody can hold you back but yourself. World War II, these are some of the great heroes. Squadron leader, Yuri Cross, DSC, DSO, 139 Jamaica Squadron, RAF Bomber Command. Yes, 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 yes. World War II veterans helped integrate Britain. What is a man? How does he link to World War II, Brixton, and Nottingham? Yes, the brothers came back. They began, in a sense, to, to, to live in Britain. They were the ones who prepared the way for the wind rush. It was Padmore who, alongside activists like Peter Abrahams, Ras McConnell, Peter Millard, and Kwame and Truman, who organized the 1945 Manchester Pan African Congress. What did I tell you? What, 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 what? FBB, foundational black Britons, have always been Pan-Africanists. Listen, listen. They had the Pan-African Congress to unify us from around the world. 
all of us fighting for rights. But they were in Britain. Here's some of the leaders. Look. There's Nkrumah. There's Kaunda. No more Kenyatta. Look, 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 look. These men later became the leaders in Africa. You know them. You know them. You know them. But they were there. They were there among the foundational Black Britons to get the knowledge, to get the unity, baby. To get the unity, baby. So they could take that unity back to the African continent. I got to say it again. I got to say it again. FBB, Foundational Black Britons, the Baradanaks, you're unique people. You're unique people. You just don't know it and won't accept it. The 1945 Pan-African Congress, it was Patty Moore alongside activists like Peter Abrams, Ros McConan, Peter Millard, and Kwame Nkrumah that organized the 1945 Manchester Pan-African Congress. The 1945 Pan-African Congress theme was challenge to the colonial powers. They demanded autonomy and independence for Africa. Pan-Africanist delegates came to fight anti-colonialism and anti-capitalism because they went hand in hand. We condemn, I quote, we condemn the monopoly of capital and the rule of private wealth and industry for private profit alone. We welcome economic democracy as the only real democracy. Yes, yes, that's what Panamore said. Black Britons have a long history of fighting exploitation, colonialism. These great men and women knew that for progress to take place in the diaspora, you must be B1, B1, Black first. Given the fact that many of the inhabitants of the Caribbean are descendants of the Baradanax, sold into slavery by Cromwell, indicates that the Caribbean people migrated to the British Isles should not be seen as newcomers. No, you're not newcomers. You're not new. In reality, these Blacks are just returning home, yes. When they came on the wind rush, they were just returning home, 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 home. Ireland, Wales, Scotland, Britain. That is your former home. You made it. They took it. West Indians came to Britain to rebuild the country. Yes. This is how London looked in the 1950s as ungrateful, dirty money. Yes, yes. It was your it was your parents, your grandparents that helped build back up Britain. This is how Britain looked. Look at how it looked today. That's because of your hard work, the hard work of your grandparents. But they make you feel you're not at home. Then they tried to send people back. Then they changed the passports. Why? Because your FBB, Foundational Black Britons, a unique and industrious, progressive, enlightened people. We need more research on the wind rush. Yes, we do need more rinse, wind, more research on the wind on the uh, wind rush. We need to know more about what these people did in London, what they did throughout the British Isles. We need to know more. We need somebody out there to do the research, the real research. Don't wait for Europeans to do the research. We need you to do the research. Know your history. Tony Warner, he has the Black History Walks. And this is a program that they have in London, and they concentrate on modern history. Tony Warner, Black History Walks. Check him out. Check him out. You got to remember the riots of 1958, Nottingham Hill. To understand who came to Britain and who felt in the decades after 1945 and why they did so and how the state regarded their movement, we had to remind ourselves a little of what happened in Britain of the 70 years ago. In June 1946, the British Cabinet Manpower Working Committee calculated that in order to meet her post-war targets, Britain would need 940,000 additional workers. By the end of the year, they raised their estimate to 1.3 million. Despite rapid mobilization between the middle of 1945 and the end of 1946, the working population fell by 1.38 million. They needed you. They needed your grandparents, your parents, 
to rebuild America. That daddy, daddy, daddy. But how did they pay you? They paid you with riots. Colin Freestyle tells us how England was after World War II and very few blacks lived in the bridge. But in his book, Struggles for the Black Community, by the late 1960s, some, some young new arrivals, many young black Brits responded by organizing themselves to demand equal rights. They became involved in the Black Panther, Black Power movement for a number of reasons. In the late 1960s, they were influenced by a number of black intellectuals, including Caribbean writers and activists C.L.R. James and Walter Rodney, and American activists such as Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, and Stokely Carmichael, who came from Trinidad. The largest and most influential Black power group in Britain were the Black Panthers. The British Panthers were founded in the summer of 1968 by the Nigerian playwright Obi, OBB Egbuna. Following Egbuna's conviction in December 1968, Aletha Jones Lekinet took over the leadership of the movement. Jones Lekinet was a migrant from Trinidad who had moved to London to study biochemistry at the University of London. Under Jones Lekonente, the Panthers became a highly effective community organization that produced the newspaper, Freedom News, led campaigns against police brutality and discrimination in employment and housing. The founder, yes, 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 the founder of the Black History Month in Britain that you celebrate every year was Aki, Akiaba Ade Seba, Sebo. Ade, Ade Akiaba Sebo began the study of Black history in the UK. In July 1987, via the Greater London Council to fight caves. The month of October is a period for reflection on our family, community, and Black Britain. He invited the top Afrocentric scholars from America and Caribbean to Britain to celebrate the African Jubilee year in, in July 1987. Yes, yes, it was Ade Sibo, Ade Sibo, who founded your Black History Month. He is the greatest Pan-African scholar living today. This man knows about the, the Pan-Africanist period. Somebody needs to go and, and interview this man and record some of, the, some of the knowledge that he got before he's gone. Stop it. Stop it. Stop letting valuable people in your history, valuable people who can tell you where you came from, stop letting them die with no record of what they could teach you. Grab this brother up. Interview him, record what he has to say. Give books back to your children so they know where they came from and who they can become. He carries the history of modern Pan-Africanism within him and explains how African leaders suffering from caves divested Ghana of its industrial base and the evolution of African leaders into neo-colonialists. His goal is for FBB is to enrich the black culture of Britain. Yes, yes, enrich your culture. That's what Black History Month is all about. In conclusion, we need more FBB scholars to study the history of Blacks in the UK. We need these scholars to fight caves and provide self-esteem and provide self-esteem to Black youth in the UK. Okay, don't forget, uh, you, can buy, you can buy my books on the uh, on Foundation of Black Britons. I talk about the history of Blacks in Europe in my book, Blacks in Europe, you know, from prehistory to contemporary times, get the book. You can get my book, The World History of the Black Race, where I talk about all the black, black continents and all the, the, all of the contributions of black people to world history, the world over. Get that book, The World History of the Black Race, and naturally get the manufactured genetic origins of the fake Eurasian back migration. Yes, they didn't originate in Europe. They came from Central Asia. They didn't originate in Europe because you were there. Your people, black people, like you, like me. And also, again, these slides are going to be be in my Patreon. So uh, join my Patreon. It's only five dollars a month, and you can see these slides, and you can see other I have video slides. I have books. I have all type of stuff in my uh, Patreon. You go to my Patreon. And it'll help you to learn more about our history as black people, more about our history as the uh, progressives, our history as the people who created this great earth civilizations, 
You can go to Twitter at Dr. Clyde Winters 8. I sometimes post. You can go see my videos on YouTube. And if you have a chance, let's go, go, let's go to my uh, my YouTube site and click it on and uh, make yourself, in a sense, uh, you know, subscribe. Also, uh, you know, Sister Shanice, she has a great YouTube channel here. Subscribe, subscribe. Don't just listen to the video. Subscribe. Come on now. Put some likes. Put some likes in the video. We need some likes. We need some likes in this video so it'll pump up, pump up, pump up, pump up, pump up, pump up, pump up. Sister Shanice, our oracle. Also, you can order my books from Amazon.com. My apologies, but I can't hear. My audio is gone. My audio is gone. Uh, oh, the people couldn't hear me? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no audio. Oh. I can hear you now. Do you hear me? I don't know what I'm coming out like. I don't know if you can even hear me. Uh, but the audio is, it sounds like Dalek speaking my end. But I can see from the chat that the comments has been phenomenal. I hear oh, you. Oh, you can hear me. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah, yeah I mean, I was following the slides, uh, reading as I was. I couldn't hear the audio, but and I, I was watching the reaction. Phenomenal, phenomenal history. My apologies that I, you know, can't communicate more effectively because I haven't got the two-way flow. But Dr. Winters, you know, please, uh, any final comments? If you're able to pick up in the chat. Uh, okay, everyone's saying that they can hear me. They need more, you know. Uh, they're thanking you for the presentation, uh, Bubba Winters. Uh, they're saying that it was amazing, uh, the knowledge that you brought today. Uh, foundational uh, African history, you know, fantastic. Uh, uh, Go Travel says, mind blown. British Black Panthers, what, what, what? Gerald Windrush generation was not welcomed in white churches, so had to form their own. So glad you can hear me. Another fantastic presentation, Dr. Winters. As I said, I was following the presentation, even though I couldn't get the audio. Uh, the audio let me do today. Uh, but what what was your message? Uh, what message, concluding message, would you like to leave with the audience, please, my, Dr. Winters, who were all blown away by your presentation today? I, uh, my, my concluding message is, is that Sister Shanice, the oracle, she's given you all these great presentations on the history of the uh, foundation of Black Britons. Have your children, have your children look at these videos. These aren't like my videos of Reverend Matthews where I, I wasn't cussing, wasn't using any profanity, so your kids can watch these. Let your kids watch them. Let your kids know their history. Let them become strong, strong in the knowledge of self. And I guarantee you that if you have your kids, even those problem kids, even those kids who you got around the house who don't want to go to school, who are acting up in school, let them see who they are. And I promise you, you will see a difference. You will see those kids begin to say, I am somebody. You're going to begin to see those troubled kids say, I can be somebody. And this is what you want them to know. But the only way they can know this is to look at these beautiful history pieces that Sister Shanice has shared with you. She shared this with you. Sister Shanice's family is out there to help make you strong, to help make your children strong, to help people understand who and what they are and what they can become. Please, please share these videos with your kids. That's my only comment. Were there any questions or whatever? I don't know.
Okay, I can hear that it's gone quiet. <laughs> Even though I didn't hear what was said, I thank you so, so much. I heard my name one or two times there and there, I think. Thank you so much, Dr. Winters. All of the, the gratitude is still coming through on the chat. Thank you so much, family. Uh, lots of love your way, Dr. Winters. Love. And um, let's see, uh, Haru is saying, wonderful presentation, Dr. Winters, gratitude and appreciation. Uh, uh, Mondele is saying, thank you, Asante. Uh, Matondo, Tosuka Kadilia, Dr. and Sister Shanice. I know I got some of that wrong, but <laughs> I'm trying. And uh, Brother Kwame uh, uh, Aboje is saying, Oh, winter's wonderful, wonderful. Liz is letting me know that she can hear us both. That's fantastic. My connection is just so poor most of the time. I'm dropping in and out and the audio has gone, you know, but we're hanging in there. Uh, Go Travel saying, wonderful, amazing presentation. We heard you, Baba. We hear you, Sister Shanice. Rise up, rise up, sis. Lots of love to the family, each and every one of you. You know, Dr. Winters, you know, I know that you can engage with yours right now. Any response to uh, the comments that I've just uh, read out there to you? Uh, my only response is that uh, not, no one is winning. When you know your history, you're going to win. And that's what it's all about, knowing is winning. And that family is why Sister Janice does the show. She does a radio program, too. She does these things to help you know who you are and what you can become, and that's important. You see, we have to get our young, we have to get the youth to understand that they're not lost. We have to get our youth to understand that they're not alone. We have to get our youth to understand that if they work hard, but not harder than white people, but if they just do the work that they need to do, they can be successful, you see? We don't want our kids to think they have to be twice as good as a white man. You'll never be twice as good as a white man because they cheat. <laughs> but you can be as good as yourself. And have your children understand this by working hard and by trying in the sense to do their best that they will be successful. Because they are the original man, the original woman. And together we're strong. Together we're stronger. Yes. I you... heard strong there. I'm still not hearing, but I hope it's all going well. Um, lots of great comments still coming through, Dr. Winters. I'm so sorry I can't hear you. Vanessa's reminding everyone to hit the and so yes please do give us a thumbs up you're saying it was a great presentation from the what i could read of the presentation it certainly was as well it was our history wow from the 1900s and like people saying i didn't realize that there were so many rights i didn't know you know all this was happening yeah and despite the way we were treated i'm looking at the numbers of us that were joining the air force the army and fighting on behalf of the same people who were like treating us like animals but i mean what are we like but uh yeah family um let me just allow uh bubba winters to close out and uh you know just to remind you to join the same time next strong as well bubba winters oh, oh an absolute gem an absolute gem you are all i can say is that family make sure that uh you get your children to look at these videos uh make sure that you get prepared save your money save your nickels and dimes and uh save your nickels and dime and then in a sense what you can do is when sister janice comes out with her, her new book you can be ready to buy it because it's going to be powerful. Bye. Thank you so much. I'm going to have to listen back uh, when I get my proper connection uh, to all of what you were say saying there, Baba. But I just want to send you a huge amount of love from all of us uh, from the UK, KK, from British and the British Isles. Thank you for the Thank work you. that you are doing have, and for sharing the works with us, Baba, to make us aware of the hidden history uh, that, you know, 
our existence in this part of the world. Rise up, rise up also Dr. Marie Charles for her formidable works as well that she has been doing to uncover also connection between us as Africans on the continent and in Britain and the British Isles. So we have a phenomenal history in this part of the world that we were never taught in the school colleges and universities. Also, just to let you know, I've got a date for your diary. So everyone, please, please do look out for the link. I'd love you to join me on Saturday, the 27th of November. I'm actually going to be launching a book. I'm launching one of the books on Saturday, uh, the 27th of November. And I would love you all to be able to join me on that day in the celebration of that book launch by Dr. Marie Charles, encouraged by Dr. Winters, is the first of what's got to be a few years. Wow, Dr. Winters had me right in when I did that research course. Oh, I was up in the three in the morning, burning the midnight oil, as they say, writing and writing. And I've got so much now uh, that I need to share and uh, well, I just want to thank you, Dr. Winters. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for the course that you did and uh, for all that you poured into each and every one of us. And uh, if we can even be just a, a frac do a fraction of all of what you have done in your lifetime, we will be contributing a huge amount, you know, to um, uncovering our history in this part of the world. So uh, let me allow Bubba Winters to come back. I'm just going to check for the in the chat for any more comments. Please bear in mind that I'm not hearing Bubba Winters, but I will listen back afterwards. Bubba Winters. Okay, like I said, is that everybody have a good evening. Take care. Bye. Oh, it's gone quiet. Someone's asking me, do I? Sunday the 27th, yes, yeah, so it's going to be on Sunday the 27th from about 2 in the afternoon through to 5 o'clock. Uh, thank you for asking, Patricia. Yes, it's uh, a one-off conference event that's going to be, ha well, it's a book launch event happening on the 27th of November. And I welcome your suggestions as to what sort of format or what content you think ought to be in that uh, book launch event, apart from obviously relaunching uh, the book. So yes, Sunday, please put Sunday, uh, the 27th of November in your diary. So ladies, ladies, while you're cooking your Sunday dinner, uh, men, men, while you've got your feet watching, you know, that movie, wait and smelling the dinner. Instead, put on uh, the Sister Shanice show because I want to share with you uh, one of the things that has come out of Dr. Winters's uh, course. And uh, it's a book inspired by a presentation delivered by uh, Dr. Marie Charles and encouraged by um, our very own Dr. Winters. So, Please do join me on that day, everybody. <laughs> so what have we got? Oh, so Gerald's saying, looking forward to the book. Thank you so much. S.A. Smith, um, will you send a notification by email? Okay, yes, I will do. Vanessa, 1950, you send uh, a notification by email. Sorry, uh, 1950 was not that long ago. Well, yeah, true, true. Not that long ago, during our grandparents' and parents' times, with some of us. Americans in the UK, Dutty Dozen, rise up the Dutty Dozen. Ah, that was a nickname for the 12 of us on the course. <laughs> Thank you both. I learned a lot about what's, go what's been going on uh, with us in Great Britain. Just imagine, uh, you know, we need the great ones uh, from outside to do our research. Well, I think, uh, you know, our doctor is making us realize that there's a huge amount of work uh, for us to do here in the UK to uncover the truth of our history. Well, 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 Dr. Winters, as always, we are so, so grateful to you. Uh, we would be honored to have you back again in the future. I know you're going to check your diary. 
available to um, you know contribute on the day of my book launch because you did do a review of the book you've read the book you've done a review and I'd love to for you to share your impression of the book on the day if you're available so look forward to hearing your response I'll, uh, I'll try to be there I'll try to be there and not be square <laughs> I didn't hear, but I will listen back. I'll listen okay. back afterwards. Yeah. So family, going to leave it there for today. Apologies on my part for the technical difficulties. I think they're going to have to reset my internet here. It's dropped so low that, you know, the audio is not coming through. But fortunately, at least you're able to hear me and you have been able to hear the presentation by our very own Dr. Winters. Uh, thank you, Dr. Winters. Thank you. Thank you so You're much. Welcome. We love you. We love you. Thank you so much. To everybody in the chat, thank you so much for joining us today. Enough love. What if enough love and respect for every one of you? Uh, Sister Shanice, out of here for now. All being well, I'll be black next Wednesday. <laughs> Bye for now. Okay. Thank you, Baba. Thank you. Have a great day now.